Halo Infinite is here. I have a very special Xbox accessory that I'm gonna unbox and avoid this game if you don't want your Xbox to crash. Let's discuss. I have a very special guest with me here today and that is the special edition Halo Infinite Series X. My last video was a pretty extensive unboxing of this little guy right here and just so pretty. What I didn't mention in that video, I wish I had, these lines and the armor plating, it's raised and you can actually tactically feel it. It's very nice touch. So give it up for my special edition Halo Infinite Series X. Glad to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Moving on. So we were prepared for Halo Infinite to drop on December 8th, the multiplayer and the campaign. But what ended up happening two days before the 20th anniversary stream, news outlets started reporting that they were hearing rumors that 343 was gonna drop the Halo multiplayer on the 15th as part of the 20th anniversary celebration. And when I saw this, I went to Google, as any good reporter would do, and I typed in Halo Infinite multiplayer. And the first thing that came up was a countdown to the 15th. And I thought, okay, all right. So something is definitely gonna happen that's a little bit bigger than we initially thought on this 20th anniversary stream. And of course, they ended that 20th anniversary celebration with an announcement that they were launching the Halo Infinite multiplayer beta. It's officially a beta. There were some rumors that saying that it was gonna be the full multiplayer, it was gonna be the multiplayer, and also a demo of the campaign, but it's just the beta version of the Halo Infinite multiplayer, like I was saying. And don't worry, if you play from now until December 8th, when the game officially releases, all of your progress that you make in the game from then until December 8th is gonna carry over to when the game officially launches. So after the 20th anniversary showcase, the multiplayer went live, sort of. There was this mad dash to go and download the game on Xbox, on Steam, on Windows, which is funny because I was under the impression from a certain section of Twitter that Xbox had no games, uh, Halo was dead, no one cared about Halo. Very interesting. Anyway, I thought I would be slick when I first did my initial Google research to go and pre-download the multiplayer portion of Halo. Uh, so I would just be able to jump right in whenever it went live. And when you went to go download it, either after the showcase announcement or if you downloaded it earlier like me, it was a file that was 280 megabytes in size. And if you know anything about modern video games, you know that that file size is too dang small. And what ended up happening when they made the announcement, if you went to go click on it, you came up with this. People were calling this the blue screen of death, uh, named after the red ring of death from the 360 era. And you know, it was a bit of a glitchy moment, but they worked very hard Halo support to fix it. And it really wasn't that long until people were playing. No matter what, we got the multiplayer early. So I'm personally thankful for that. They did not have to do this. We could have been made to wait until December 8th, but they were nice enough to throw us a little bone and get us playing Halo Infinite a couple weeks early, which I think is really cool. Like I said earlier, this is a beta version of the game. There are three big team battle maps with uh, four game modes, Capture the Flag, Oddball, Slayer, I can't remember the other one off the top of my head. And they also have eight arena maps, as well as uh, a couple of those similar game modes as well, including uh, Stronghold, which is sort of uh, King of the Hill. They don't have SWAT, which I desperately miss, but hopefully they'll add it in at a future date. They also have a ranked arena as well, and also the academy and bot boot camp as well if you wanna, you know, ease your way in before you jump into full on PVP multiplayer. I talked about my experience with Halo Infinite in a previous video when they did the multiplayer flight, so I won't spend too, too much time on it now, but I had a ton of fun with this. I appreciate the sound design of this one in particular. Even with your standard assault rifle, they really beefed up the sound to make it feel like you are you have an actual gun and not just your standard assault rifle that you load in with. I messed around with Big Team Battle, Arena, and I had a really good time. Overall, I think this is something that people are are gonna be super excited about. But the only thing I could really say about it is I'm pretty sure we're all in agreement that 
the progression and the battle pass system needs to be reworked somehow. Progression feels really slow at this point and the challenges that you would get for XP and stuff, they don't see as super doable as they were in the Master Chief collection where it was just a standard, oh, get 20 kills with an assault weapon, get 20 kills with the plasma weapon, get X amount of kills with grenades, whatever. So I really hope that they revamp that in some way because the sense of progression, even if it's just multiplayer, is, I feel, really important to the Halo franchise. That's what I really loved about Halo 3 and Halo Reach, especially. If you saw someone out in the field with a flaming skull and a katana on their back, you knew they were serious. So I hope they have elements of that where uh, you have a real sense of achievement rather than just buying skins and slapping them on just for the fun of it. I thought it was really smart to make the first season the Heroes of Reach, so everything that you unlock just makes you look like our favorite noble team Spartans. But I'm pretty sure I saw something online, 343 themselves, coming out and acknowledging that feedback from fans. So hopefully they'll work in a system before launch that kind of revamps that whole battle pass stuff. And now I'm super excited to say that I have right here, bam, the 20th anniversary Xbox controller. Now this is something that, gosh, right now it's almost impossible to find, right? It was sold out pretty quickly on the pre-orders, of course, just like every other accessory that Xbox has been putting out and the hardware, of course. And they got it into stores, I'm pretty sure, for the November 15th anniversary, uh, but again, sold out. It went very, very quickly. So I'm super excited that I have it physically in my hands, ready to show off to my channel. Just starting on the box, very, very cool. It kind of really reminiscent of that OG Xbox green glow kind of action. As you can see, it kind of carries over right here into the 20th anniversary logo. I'll give you a little show of the back. It just goes into more detail about the controller itself. It's almost as if they have a timer starting from 2001 and then ending on 2021. It has a highlighted with that Xbox glow right here. I thought very small, but cool detail. But now, well, we really wanna see the unboxing, right? <laughs> nice. And nice. It just, God, it's as beautiful as I thought it would be. Maybe even more so. We have it right here, bam. Of course, they went with the uh, kind of 2000 craze where everything was see-through transparent, so you can see through uh, very clearly to all the inner workings of this controller. I think that's a very nice touch. Gosh. You have the logo right here as well. A very clever logo, I, I, just the perfect logo I feel for Xbox. And then you got the zero, but in that zero, you got the Xbox X, perfect. So another thing that you'll notice when you take a gander at the front of this controller is that along the D-pad, on the border right here, underneath the controller, you can see that there's a green ring right here surrounding the D-pad. I think that's a really cool detail. Moving on over to the back, just a standard black, but you also have this green right here on the handles. Now this green, uh, usually on the, a regular series controller, they are texturized on the back, but they have that same texture on this right here, but it's also rubberized. So it gives a little bit more of that extra grip and it feels really great, honestly. Moving on over to the front, I'm gonna go ahead and try, the, I have a battery in here as well already. So I'm gonna just, oh, nice. That's really cool. I really love how the green of the Xbox X kind of pops out when it fully lights up right here. It's almost 360-esque, I would say. Very cool touch. Right here, 20th anniversary controller. Like I said, this is a prime target for scalpers, resellers, a very highly sought after item. But if you can get your hands on one, if you successfully pre-ordered one, I highly recommend it. I would say you're gonna be very happy with this. So believe it or not, there was some other news to come out of the 20th anniversary event that had nothing to do with Halo. And the biggest one outside of Halo was probably a massive addition to Xbox's backwards compatible library. Now this is a pretty big deal because two years ago, Microsoft came out and said they were putting their backwards compatibility program on hold, which was a huge bummer. For the past few weeks and months, 
There have been some leaks regarding this topic, and they have been supporting a lot of their older titles on the Xbox Game Store and on Game Pass. So I had people wondering what they were working on and what direction they were taking this in and how far they were gonna go. I myself talked in a previous video about how I would love to see Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe get backwards compatibility support on the series consoles. And it turns out that it did get support. It's part of the titles that are going to be added to the library, which is awesome. And of course, over 70 other games are coming via backwards compatibility. This is obviously great news if you wanna relive all of these classic titles just in one convenient box. I know some people still have the original consoles that they run on, but it's kind of a pain to find, you know, the adapters and, you know, the TVs back then, the necessary equipment to hook them up to the console you can't really do on your HDMI cord right now. So it's nice to have them in one place on one console. And of course, when these titles come to these newer consoles, they get all sorts of bells and whistles. So they're gonna get boosted frame rate, they're gonna get boosted resolution, up to four times as much if you're playing on a Series X for some titles. And overall, it's just very, very cool because you don't see this sort of effort in terms of bringing older titles, making them playable on current gen consoles from the other gaming giants, Nintendo and Sony. I know a lot of players are frustrated because they can't play PS3 games on their PS5. So this is a really cool effort to see from Microsoft and Xbox, but there is a bit of bad news. And that is, this is gonna be their final edition for the Xbox backwards compatibility library. They were saying that not only were there technical reasons for, you know, technical problems in terms of getting an old game to run on newer hardware, but there was also legal and licensing issues as well, which I know is a totally sticky situation. I wouldn't even want to touch that if I was them. But it is very cool that we're getting such a massive update. And the big news is that not only do I get to play Mortal Kombat versus DC, but I also get to play all the original Max Payne games, baby. And now this is something I'm super excited for because when Max Payne first came out, I was obviously a little kid. I think in 2001, let's see, I was eight years old. And at that time, I owned a PlayStation 2 and an N64. And I would play games like Jack and Daxter, Sly Cooper, you know, platformers that were a little more kid friendly, right? Meanwhile, my older brother is the one that had the OG Xbox and he would play games like Max Payne, Fable, Halo. So it really solidified in me this idea that Xbox was for more mature gamers. It was a cool, edgy, older brother console. Whereas mine, my PS2 and my N64 were for little kids. I know that wasn't the reality of it, but that's how it felt at the time. So Max Payne, I have very fond memories of watching my brother play, switching off and playing throughout myself. So I can't wait to relive those memories again. Battlefield 2042 is in a bit of a tough spot right now. So first, we already knew that this holiday season was gonna be pretty crowded in terms of FPS games with Call of Duty Vanguard, Battlefield, and Halo Infinite all launching around the same time period. But with Halo Infinite launching early with its multiplayer on the 15th, they've essentially launched at the same time, Halo Infinite and Battlefield 2042, because people are already playing Battlefield via early access before it releases on November 19th. So that's some pretty tough competition right there. On top of that, players are reporting on Xbox that their consoles are crashing when they're playing the game, which is a terrible look, obviously. This comes after EA supported the Xbox Series consoles as the official consoles of Battlefield 2042. So now Never a good look, but people are going on and saying, yeah, I'm playing the game and all of a sudden my Xbox will just fully turn off. And that's a whole nother level of problems right there. It's one thing for a game to crash and it boots you back to the home screen, right? But for it to cause a catastrophic failure where your whole system shuts down, very, very, very annoying. Especially for these people that are that paid good money to play the game early, some as much as 120 bucks. And the technical support forum for EA regarding Battlefield 2042 is just flooded with people that are experiencing the same problem. And these, like I said, these 
These people paid good money. They're probably super fans. They're throwing money to support the game and play, get the privilege of early access. And they're for more or less just you know, getting the short end of the stick. I was gonna say something a lot more vulgar, but they're getting the short end of a stick, paying extra for a game that crashes their console. Not a good look. And these poor representatives for EA are just fighting for their lives in these replies saying, oh, are you making sure that the firmware is updated? Did you make sure to restart your console, reboot your console? And of course, none of it is working. People are still having the same problems. So it's just a whole fiasco for people who are excited to play this game and it's crashing. And people are even saying that in the beta for Battlefield 2042, they were experiencing the same problem. So this is consistent, it's been ongoing, and it needs to be addressed. Because like I said, you don't want to make the people who are the early supporters of your game mad. There have been reports of it happening on other consoles that run the game, but it's very prevalent and very consistent. But it seems to be that the majority of people experiencing this are on Xbox, and that's gotta be fixed. Anyway, thanks again for tuning in. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Ray. I would very much appreciate it if you went and followed Stay Xbox Ready on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I'm most active on Twitter, if I'm being completely honest, and I would very much appreciate it if you follow me there. If you have not checked out my unboxing video of this, I would highly suggest checking it out because it's just a cool console, and I'm so happy that it's, I got to physically have it here in my hands and check it out firsthand. Anyway, make sure you subscribe, set your notifications to all, and we'll see you next time.